Welcome to the Monday, November 19th meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let members and staff introduce themselves. Hannah Smith. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett. Eric Gilbertson. Seth Mitchell. For anybody who's not been here before, we are advisory to the Development Review Board. We will review the applications and move them forward. Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor of the agenda, raise your hand. Unanimous. And unless anybody has any other comments, we'll go straight to the first application for 7985 Barry Street, owner Rivellini, and applicant Woodbelly Pizza. Come up to the table and describe your project. Should I sit? Or yes. Oh, okay. Go ahead and have awesome. a seat. Um, so we have um, a submitted application to develop like an outdoor eatery um, outside of our commercial kitchen on 87 Berry Street. Uh, it would be, um, what would you call it, like seasonally permanent. So we would um, install the outdoor eatery maybe in March or April, weather permitting, and then um, dismantle it in November. Um, there would be minimal seating, there would be a platform uh, attached to a wood-fired oven, which is on a trailer, uh, movable. The platform would be in four by four sections, bracketed together. Um, sorry, actually, so I, I submitted my application to Audra and then I don't have it with me, so I'm feeling a little bit weird, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, thank you. Yes, yeah, so it is verbally like running through. So this is where it is, or has been currently, right? Yeah, we have our commercial kitchen. It's it would it would be in the parking lot right outside of our commercial kitchen where we already operate. Um, we're a catering company, so we are already using that parking lot for our wood-fired ovens on trailers. Um, we've been operating a pizza Friday this season, so we've already had on-site sales on the spot. Uh, what we're proposing is more of just like a an aesthetic enhancing and an extension of the hours. Is this the same trailer that would move around to the other sites, the farmer's market, etc.? Yeah. So you would just back this in, it's for certain days during the week? Um, our plan would be to allocate that oven for the on-site sales for the season, so we would back it in in the spring, but it would stay there until the Okay. Can you build another trailer for your other? We hope so. <laughs> yeah, that's the plan. We hope so. Um, it does not... Um, we're not, the way I understand it, or the way I am proposing it, we wouldn't be permanently um, changing anything of the property. That was one question, you know, it's all, it would all be movable. Um, there was one concern about how close we were to the property line of mm -hmm. the, the southern property line, but after speaking to Audra and also speaking to our uh, landlord, Steve Rebellini, we feel that we've we're getting close, but we think that it will be appropriate. We have not been able to be in touch with the uh, railroad company. Railroad can be very difficult, I think. Yeah, infamously so, right, yeah. And how about the adjacency to parking with the oven? Any concern about it? Um, in terms of um, like the parking spot right next to the oven, um, it in terms of ashes or embers, that wouldn't be a concern. We'll be like right next to it anytime we're operating. Um, if someone ran into it, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've I've thought about a few um, awful possibilities, but I, I think we're already really act like we're already really active in those spaces. So our other tenants in the building that also use that parking lot are like we all are pretty cooperative about the spots. How close are you? parking from the edge of the oven, out of curiosity. Yeah, um, it'll just be a couple feet. Like, we're, we will be occupying what is effectively now like a parking space. Mm -hmm. So, but it'll be permanent. Um, it won't be moving, so I feel like people will be pretty aware of it. How wide is your trailer with the oven on it? Um, that's such a good question. How wide is the little oven? The little oven's about, let's say, six and a half, seven feet. Yeah, wide. I don't think it's wider than it's seven feet. In a parking space with parking yeah. So parking okay. spaces are usually nine by eighteen, so if you yep. if you justify it to one side, it'll probably be a little bit better 
Yeah. Can you actually touch the, the oven? You can, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very well insulated. Yeah, it's, it's cob and it actually has like a layer. It's air and then metal welded together. So. I was just thinking if you could move, move it over as far as you can away from the parking space so that way if somebody pulls a big you know, pickup truck or something in there and swings the door open, it's not yeah. going to hit your trailer. Yeah, yeah that's definitely a good concern. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the side of the oven that would face the adjacent parking space is the back of the oven. Okay. Right, door where the oven is. right, yeah, so the oven is backed in, so the, the, the opening where we'll be cooking is we're going to raise the oven up a bit so it'll be, um, someone will actually be cooking but standing on the trailer. So it'll okay. basically be a pop-up kitchen. And how about... Um, roping off or safing off the oven from pedestrian yeah. traffic. Yeah. Something you'd consider. We're, yeah, we're planning on using planter boxes and small um, basically like poured concrete with like a, a pipe in it that we're gonna be running chain to designate the seating area during service hours. So I it would be a very natural thing to extend that to like the mm -hmm. outer perimeter of the oven for sure. Might be a good idea just to again keep people yeah going in and out of the parking space on that side from, you know, getting too close or running into the oven, depending on, you know, what trailer extension there is. You don't want yeah. anybody sort of bumping into that. It's a natural walkway. People, a lot of, like, professional folks working and other people going to the co-op walk through that space. So we've been, um, or we're, we're interested or committed to leaving a walk, like, open walkway. Um, so it would be helpful also to close it off so people don't kind of try and like tuck around okay. the oven. Yeah. Are you planning on having any, you know, like a pop-up tent or canopy or anything over it? Um, right now we're using um, entirely mobile 10 by 10 pop-up tents. Um, I would like to have a, like a roller canopy like you would see on an RV that mm -hmm. can roll up when we're not in service, but that would be from the movable 16-foot-long um, trailer that is a effectively the kitchen and mm -hmm. it would be off of that structure okay. rolling over a serving platform. That would be the only thing that we would cover. So the, the platform is where you actually sit in addition to the alcohol area? Um, I imagine it being a serving platform with um, a bar and like a couple seats so when we're not super busy or if someone wants to just sit um, and eat a slice of pizza and then we'll have a ramp and steps coming down to like um, three or four wrought iron, relatively small round tables with a couple chairs on them. It's mostly for ambiance, but definitely people do like to sit. And so the, the, the platform is how far off the ground? So we're actually dealing with a pretty um, unlevel area in that part of the parking lot. We've talked to Steve about it and it would it's, it's complicated. There's a drain pipe there and it's kind of important for the drainage of the entire parking lot. So um, we're proposing to actually, it seems like the most, the least invasive to the structure of the parking lot and the easiest to move around, but to drill rebar down into the parking lot um, in maybe 12 different spots or six different spots and then um, a wooden platform. So in, in, in the lower area where the drain is, the platform will be almost two feet up, but closer towards the trailer kitchen will actually be like um, a two by six set onto the parking lot, the asphalt. So it'll have a rail, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And your ramps aren't intended to be ADA. Uh, no. Right, they're just ramps, right? Yeah. I think hopefully it'll be easier for some folks, but why not? I should look into that, actually. How about um, lighting and power and music that all happening? Yeah, so a part of the proposal or the application is that we would have a light um, installed on the side of the building. Right. Am I crazy? You might have separately applied for that. I'm sorry. Okay, that's separate. So there is lighting described as the hanging lights. Yeah, sorry. I just realized that it's a separate application, what we were talking about for the light on the side of the building. Mm -hmm. For this um, aspect, yeah, hanging lights. 
um, low wattage LED. Um, I think 40 watt bulbs is what we would use, plastic bulbs, so to minimize risk of breaking glass. Um, easy to take down and move around if we needed to, but uh, to be up, yeah. From, from the window of the building, basically running out to the um, kitchen, like the structure. Yeah, there's a picture of them, but just hanging, just hanging LED lights, cast ambiance, basically. We'll probably be using, um, we'll probably be using the same hanging lights inside the kitchen for the workers to cook. Where you're, <coughs> where you're showing your planter boxes, it supports for some kind of roping or you could actually make those poles taller so that you could have a few mm. of them tall enough that you could string your lights around so that whether you had the canopy open or closed, you would have some lighting there. Nice. nice. Yeah. So we don't have to set the lights up every week, you mean? <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah, we're in pop-up mode, so. But that's a great suggestion. Yeah. Any other comments, questions, suggestions? So you're anticipating a season probably from May through October, something like that? Yeah. It obviously dependent on weather. Weather permitting, yeah. Yeah, it feels weather permitting. Um, we'd like, uh, sorry, I'm having a hard time like being all. Um, what did we apply for seasonally? Sorry, I wrote it down. I think it accounts to be like a permanent, even though it's seasonal, really. I think it's it's considered permanent, right? Yeah, they don't really have a temporary yeah. permit. You, you can put, put a time limit on it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we'll, yeah, we'll put it up as early as we can and leave it up as long as we can. It's permitted. Mm -hmm. As long as people still want pizza. Again, any other questions from anyone? Okay, I'll go down through the criteria. Uh, this one, one, I would really see if you can get hold of the railroad because I see an issue with them mm -hmm. crossing from the Stonecutter's Way to tracks to get to your place. Mm -hmm. They're just difficult to deal with, so you need time to do it. Yeah, the workers crossing? Or you mean people just crossing? People crossing to get people to people. Crossing. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, oh. yes. You got to watch out for those high-speed trains. <laughs> <laughs> have you just been having a hard time figuring out who to reach? If I could chime in, yeah, actually, you want to come up have, here? We can hear you. We have contacted the railroad, and they say that the property line is only disclosed on a need-to-know basis, and we don't have a need-to-know. Have you contacted Tom McCardle and Department of Public Works to see if he can help you out and act as a go-between? Um, I know that our fellow worker owner, David Huck, was in communication with him, and um, it, it, I was not in direct communication with him, and at some point months ago it just felt like a kind of a standstill, and through talking to Audra, it just, we just kind of pushed everything as yeah. far away from the train tracks as we could. Yeah. Um, we've also just been... Um, yeah, it feels like we're operating in kind of a common sense and not so much as any clear agreement with them. Or yeah. Yeah. No. And again, that's not so much a design nope. element, but no, it's, it's just, uh, but important, a legal issue. important yeah. for, for sure. not to yeah. create something that's going to cause a problem for you down the road. Yeah, if they felt like we were encouraging folks to walk across the tracks in any way. Yeah. 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 OK, anything else? I'll go down through the criteria. Number one, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district involves an historic structure. I would say this does not apply in this location and for this application. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, non proposed with this application. Uh, I mean, other than the. Planter it's boxes. really planter boxes. <laughs> planter boxes so that would be acceptable. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, acceptable. 
recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house. Acceptable. It is visible from Stonecutter's Way. Uh, all in favor of the application, raise your hand. Sign that on the lower lower left above my name. And this is administrative. It's administrative. Yep. Comes back to comes back to us. Thank you for your patience okay. with me. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck yeah, with your project. It. Thank you. Okay. Next application for sixty Main Street. Applicant Curtis, Curtis Ashline for Irving Energy Overlay Park LLC. You're Curtis? I am. Have a seat and describe your application. And I'm in the same boat <laughs> she was in after I submitted everything to Audra. I, my folder's a lot more empty. It's got stuff in there, just not as much. So, yeah. thank you. Can you So basically, I'm a sub for Irving. I put tanks in the ground for them. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do over here is we're going to try to add a, a third above ground. Um, basically, the buildings that it feeds um, right now, current, the two that are currently there, if, if you don't have a propane truck hooked to it, you know, you're, you're running out constantly between the usages for heat and for... I'm not going to say anything because they're right there, but there's a pizza place in that building that uh, <laughs> burns a lot of propane. Um, yeah, 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 they're propane, so you got this. But, but yeah, so um, basically it just, it's, it's wasn't, by the time they added on and added on and added on more heat, more heat, and more this and more that to the building, it just wasn't sufficient. So what we're trying to do is put a third tank in. Um, as you see, there's an engineered design um, by DeWolf. There are engineers. Um, for tank placement, um, we know how to strap the tanks for safety purposes, for flooding um, and whatnot. Um, we will run the vents above flood level, so in case there was ever an issue, the, the venting uh, wouldn't be a problem. Um, we know legal strapping. Everything is going to be to code. The, the fire chief uh, gave approval. He, he said he has no problems with a, a third tank in there. Um, we're going to do new Jersey barriers in front of them. Not the prettiest thing, but safety for cars and people, obviously, is, is very important. And uh, uh, Overlake has no problems with it. It's their property, and they're, you know, they, they, you know, they're, they're for it. So that's do the existing tanks have Jersey barriers? Uh, there's, like, blocks and stuff in front of them now. Because Irving took over the property, so they had what they had. We're going to bring in a couple fresh Jersey barriers and... You know, make it look as you could as good as you can for Jersey Bears, not run down, broken looking blocks. You know, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So, just to clarify, in front of the new tank or in front of all the tanks? Yes, everything. Everything. Yeah, we'll start from this here, and then we'll go right in front of the new ones. Oh. Can you clarify what you meant about the venting? Okay, so so there's a vent on the regulator. And basically, because you know, this is a flood area, we're going to make sure that the vent is above um, the, the highest known flood area. And then that way, <clears throat> if there's ever a flood, then the regulator won't be leaking propane because if you, you know, you fill them with water, they, they can act up and, and not work correctly. So if you send it way up there, then it's, it just keeps it safe. So what, is yeah. that, what does that actually look like? <laughs> That's cute. Um, I think I think they got Unistart over there uh, with clamps, and then basically it would be like a uh, three quarter inch CPVC sticking up. It's kind of like a snorkel, mm -hmm. only it's you know this big instead of something that would run your your off road Jeep. You know what I mean? So we're gonna hope the water doesn't get that high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's not, water. My player has this water issues, but we're just we're just staying ahead of everything yeah. that we possibly I, I know. See, you've got it really well anchored on a big concrete block. During Irene, some of the propane tanks that floated down the river, they become yeah, they're bobbers. Oh yeah, range. it was yeah, yeah, it wasn't good. So well, heavy. My buddy was down in Florida for one of the uh, what the hurricanes, and they sent a link saying that you know 
our hurricane now has sharks. So not only are you up in the air in a nice tornado, but there's a, there's a shark right there. I'm like, yeah, that looks like fun. So yeah, back to your propane tanks floating around. Yeah, no, no, everything's anchored. Um, everything's, you know, um, designed by the engineer. And uh, what we're doing, because right now there's, there's an existing slab and what, what the engineer approved was we're going to bring in some big blocks and basically basically dig them to grade and set them and anchor them together and anchor them to the tank because you and I both know pouring concrete over the water is a lot of fun and being cost effective it's it's easier to you know dig you know dig a little bit set some blocks so everything's flush and everything's the same grade you know basically we're we're over on our weight ballast which I think in this area is like a 1.5 factor and and again the engineer you know approved the design and. So, so we won't make a big mess. We'll put in one more tank and hopefully make a happy customer. I mean, you know, that's what we're shooting for. And, and we're doing it safely and legally. You know, everything's to state and local code. And um, we have decreased traffic back there. <laughs> no, no, we're just. I mean, we're out of the way. Yeah, and there's no decrease in traffic in that area. That's just busy. You try to go to the hardware store or anywhere. So. <coughs> Any other comments? Questions? Again, I'll run down through the criteria for this one. Preservation, reconstruction of the appropriate historic style, not applicable. Harmony of exterior design, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed materials, acceptable. No landscaping proposed. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, acceptable. Recognition of and respect our view corridors and probably not applicable at this location. All in favor of the application, raise your hand. And I'll get you to sign this one on the lower left above my name there. Perfect. And again, this is another administrative approval. Yep. Everything tonight is administrative approval. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We're good. Thank you very much. Thank you guys Thank for your time. You. Okay. Appreciate Thank you. It. Next application is for 89 Main Street. Owner Doug Nettie, applicant for Vermont League of Cities and Towns. <coughs> Hi, I'm Jessica Hill. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. Describe your project. Uh, my project is um, a sign, a new sign to replace the existing sign at City Center for the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. We've been in that space since 1997, and the sign is starting to show a lot of wear and fade and whatnot. So uh, we've been working on a new, some new branding and a new logo design since our renovation at City Center four years ago and we're just not getting there. So we just need to replace the sign to make it nice, new, and um, hopefully a little more safe. I'm sure it's fine, but in any case, so we hope it's just a simple uh, replacement. It is not the same exact color. There's a minty green background. Uh, right, this is correct. I'm sorry, the existing sign is sort of a minty green. This is what we're proposing just to be clean and crisp and to show the so name of the organization. So this is sort of a, like an off-white background? I think so. I think it's actually just white. Just white. Yeah, okay. just white. I'm sorry, I was rambling. But comparison from the existing, it's sort of a green with a cream color uh, words, but it's not very recognizable. It doesn't really pop. So as you know, there are a number of businesses at City Center, so we just look, like to spruce it up, make it cleaner. Same size as yes. the existing? Yes. And same location. And what's the material of the sign? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. I think yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I did actually make a copy of my application, but I didn't bring it with me, so I apologize. No, that's okay. I think it's okay. Okay. I mean, unless you all have questions that I need to refer to that for. Did that get bounced a little bit off the. I believe so. Yeah, because there's that siding so there. It can dry so. Out back there yes. I, I believe so, though. I know another sign just got replaced, and um, it's not the same size as the sign that was there, and it looked like it must have been really flush to the building because the paint behind is very faded. So um, 
we would just hope to take the same footprint and not leave any It's a really good in. idea to mount it just, you know, half an inch off the building just yep. to allow air behind it so you don't Absolutely. get a lot of deterioration of the sign band. Absolutely. I'll share that with the sign company. And a half inch actually keeps the bats out from behind it. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Spiders. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments, questions? Okay, we'll go through the sign criteria, criteria for this one. Preservation and reconstruction of the appropriate historic style. I, this is acceptable for this location. Harmony of exterior design, whether the properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility proposed landscaping, none proposed. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, no change in lighting or anything on There's the There's no lighting there for okay. us, no. So not applicable. Recognition of and respect for view corridors and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. Conformance with cityscape placement and design recommendations, acceptable. Compatibility with subject property and adjacent properties, acceptable. Shall not obscure significant architectural details, acceptable. Consistency and uniformity of multiple signs in CB2 and OP districts, not applicable here. Illumination, not applicable. Pennants and banners, not applicable. Individual letters affixed, painted, or engraved directly on the building or structure are encouraged. The sign in the sign ban is acceptable here. All in favor of the application, raise your hand. And again, if you would sign above the cleaning. Certainly. Thank you very much. The next application is for the same building. Applicant Jeremy Marrier. Do I did I pronounce that correctly? Hi. I'm actually not Jeremy. My name is Ramiz. I'm going to be contractor. Jeremy could make. So okay. he asked me if I can spell your name for us. R A M I Z. B I K I C. Okay, and you're installing three new windows. Correct. Describe the windows. The windows going to be approximately, I think, 32 inches by 60. And the wood windows. This is already on that side one window existing. So we're just going to match everything same. It's not going to be changed, any change, so. Are they deteriorated? I'm sorry? Are the windows deteriorated? Interior? They're rotten. They're not there. They're not They're there. Not there. They're They're it's new there. windows They're for a new office. office. Okay. Yeah, yeah we windows. have one window in the corner down. You can get that. Then we have. So the original the windows above, are they oh, integrity as well? Are they integrity? Are they, they're double hung, right? Yes, they're double hung. Okay. What, what brand window are they? You know? um, I'm not sure. I think they're Marvin, but they're up top window of the original on the building. Are they metal or fiberglass? I think the top one is uh, aluminum outside. I'm curious, why, why would you go with? Because the bottom one that this, we have. This one? Yes, huh? it's a wood. It's wood? Yes. All wood? Yeah. Okay. How closely will the Marvin match the one, this one to the right? They profile? can. They're gonna match exact same. Okay. We already have a uh, Alan Lambert. The guy come and look and Scotty Wilson. Scotty Wilson. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he looks and he <laughs> tells us that he can match everything same. Okay. And this is 
This is brick veneer, right? It's not yes. full art. Okay. Yes. Okay. And you're putting in galvanized lintels and kind of yeah. on the other side. Inside the building, Chirac. Uh, steel uh, framing and Chirac. And um, what's what's occupying that space? Right now, it's not occupied. Dagnetti tried to put more windows because it's they don't have any window, so it's hard to rent. Mm -hmm. So he wants to put windows and try to rent that way, maybe easier. So there's no particular tenant waiting to go in there? No, not that I know. Okay. And these are the windows if you're looking at the building. I believe it's right in here. So there's, this is the front of the building. Yes. And this is yeah. East State Street. Yes. And it's not on the back of the building, but no. it's on this. No, it's in between Bethany Church. Right uh, in and here. The it's that alleyway. Yes, that alleyway. No, it's not painted. It's not painted? No. Are you going to have to salvage brick in order to tooth it back in? Yeah. Yeah, the header and everything for the purpose. The, uh, actually, that brick is holding nothing. It's just halfway to the building. You can see that line. Yeah. This is how the far brick go. And it's not going to hold nothing. I mean, it's not. Right, but you're going to put a new lintel in, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that the grout color will match. Yes. Yeah. And again, all of the colors for the wood ultrax are the bronze, the dark bronze color, okay. which would match the existing windows. Any other comments, questions? Okay, I'll go through the criteria. Preservation and reconstruction of the proposed of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure. Acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district. Acceptable. Compatibility ability of proposed exterior materials with other properties. Acceptable. <coughs> Compatibility of proposed landscaping, none proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, no change in utilities. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of a city and state house. Uh, the building is in a gateway, but even though this uh, corner is not really uh, too visible, but I will just say it is acceptable because of the building's location itself. All in favor of the application, raise your hand. And then just to note the A1 drawing group, it doesn't show the existing window, it just shows. It doesn't show the quantity one or the other. Yeah, I think it, it, I think this was originally they were discussing having just two windows added and then they added three. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's why this is slightly mm -hmm. off. So we're aware of that for the permit permit. Okay. So it's another window added to the left. How does that? That's my take on it. Because okay. you've got the existing and it says existing on here. Okay. So there'll be three evenly spaced between the, where you can just, see the pipes and then the <coughs> It just shows that in this drawing here, that yeah. you're adding three evenly yeah. spaced yeah. to match the, yeah. it says even though it doesn't show all yeah. the yeah. elevation. Yeah, we're aware. Yeah. 
<clears throat> and I'll get you to sign this one above my name there. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. The next application is for 180 Main Street. Catherine Coteus, how do you pronounce that? Coteus. Coteus, okay. Um, and you're obviously not Catherine. So I'm not Catherine, I'm, I'm Stephen. Stephen? Uh, yes. With a P or a V? A PH, yeah. And your last name? Coteus. Okay. That's my wife. Okay, describe your garden shed. Uh, it is. It's a garden shed. It was um, prefabricated, and um, uh, it was actually a, a wedding present, and it was um, dropped off, and so it is existing there on the property right now. And I can show you a, a photo of it. Um, it's an eight by eight garden shed. It's all wood, um, and you have the photo there. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, we have a photo on the lot. On the, like before it was. Uh, I don't have a photo of it on the lot. Okay. No. Cool. That's fine. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's set back um, uh, toward the um, back of the property uh, relative to um, relative to North Street. Uh, or sorry, relative to, to Main Street. Um, so as you drive by on either side, it's not not terribly visible. You can see the peak as you're driving by. Is the what is it said back ten feet? Is that does that meet the requirements? Yep, for an accessory shed. That's fine. Comments, questions, suggestions oh. about the garden shed? Have you spoken to the neighbor about it? Thanks, neighbor. Um, we've spoken to the uh, tenants that are there, but it, it's rented out. Um, I've not spoken to the, to the owner. On the Main Street side, you mean? Uh, or, the, or the North Street side? Uh, on, the, on the Main Street side, sorry, yeah. Is it screened from them by the, it shows some trees there? Uh, there are trees there, and it's, so it's sort of partially screened on that side. Um, it is visible from, from their house, but it's a, um, there's a slope upward there. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, they, it doesn't, doesn't block their, the view of their window. Um, they can still see out and see daylight. Okay. <laughs> It's probably not terribly tall, probably eight or nine feet high. Yeah, yeah, it's about that high. Okay. Again, go through the criteria. Preservation and reconstruction of the appropriate historic style. Uh, it is in the historic district, even though it's not an historic structure. So we can just say it's acceptable. Harmony of exterior design, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, no change in the landscaping on this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, no lighting. No, there's no lighting. Okay, yeah. not applicable. Recognition of and respect for view quarters, not applicable here. All in favor of the application, raise your hand. What is the outside material? Is it wood? It's or wood. It's wood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it looks like tea metal. Yeah. Which is a plan. OK. 
Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I just leave it there. Bit. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Next application, 149 Main Street, the Gary Home. A backup generator in the 500 gallon below grade propane tank. Yeah, my name is Chuck Meeks, M-E-E-K-S, and I'm a maintenance supervisor for Owen Fisher Home. And um, the project uh, involves replacing the existing generator. And the existing generator is in the garage and the state, new state regulations don't allow it in the garage. <laughs> so we need to move it outside and it's gonna be on a slab and it's gonna be elevated above the flood zone. And um, we need to increase the runtime of it. So we need to put in a larger propane tank and um, a 500 gallon tank has been recommended and that'll be buried adjacent to the generator behind the garage. Is the generator going in that corner there? Yeah, just it's going to be a couple feet out from the building. Right. Behind the garage. Yep. And the tank that's there is going to be. That's going to be removed. It'll be gone and yep. the new one will be buried. Yep. Okay. Then it'll be buried. Replace the generator with the tank. Or another way around. Replace the, the tank will be gone and the. Because there is an existing generator there, correct? No. Well, it's inside it's the inside garage. But, but it's inside. Yeah. So that this tank, one, will, that, that tank, tank will be gone, and right. then the generator will go in the corner yep. forward. To, yeah, near forward. that tank, but behind the garage. Yeah. We'll tuck it in as close as I'm we sorry, can. behind the garage, back here? That's the side. On yeah, the side. The tank's on the back. Yes. Okay. Yep. And Excellent. I guess you could say the generator will be to the right of where that tank is. Yes. Okay. So how high will the generator be off the ground? And then secondly, how it's, much can you screen it's, the ground? It's going to be about three and a half feet to the bottom of the generator. And the generator is Above outside. grade. Yep. Three foot six. The generator is as well? The generator is about, I think, four feet tall. Okay. So we're top seven feet. Seven yep, and close to seven to feet to the top of, of it. Yes. What color is it? It's um, oh, it's a powder <laughs> coat, um, light brown, tan color. Yeah. Okay. It's not like the caterpillar. Right. right. It's, it's like not bright, bright yellow, yellow that yeah. you can see from a half a mile away. Yeah, it's kind of an earth tone. Yes. You could yeah. call it. Actually, that'll blend in with a brick better than. And bright orange. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not going in front of the window though. Yeah, it'll be beside the window. Yeah. And you're not proposing any screening at this point? No. No. Looks like there's some vegetation there. It'll probably disappear between the veg existing vegetation and the building anyway. Yeah, there's some At lilac. least from this view. There's lilac trees behind the garage now. I didn't cut them all down. Mm -hmm. Are you going to put concrete down? Is that what I understood? Yeah, it'll be on a slab. So yep. that that's not there now? Right, that slab is not there now, no. Just out of curiosity, that doesn't have anything to do with the design. Uh, what's the kilowatt? 30. 30? Yeah. How long can you run a 500 gallon facility? It's going to be over 24 hours. I don't know. I would say probably 48. Yeah. That's a curiosity. Yeah. It's going to go more than two days on that. Yeah. This is for a critical power? Yeah, this, we're a residential care, yeah, so it's important we have a running backup generator and the time How is important. How often do you have to test it? Um, it's it's, it's, like, it's going to cycle once a week for about 20 minutes. It's just, it exercises at that on that schedule. And what's the decibel rating on there? I think it's like 60, I got the specs in here. It's got a... Cab the cabinet this one's coming with is um, low noise. Um, right here, on a weekly exercise, it's 54 dB or dBA, so which is the same level as a Bosch dishwasher in your house. 
<laughs> it's pretty quiet. I have an LG. If it was a diesel generator, it'd be making yes. a racket. Yeah. I think full load it says 61. Uh -huh. so. Actually, I know somebody who's got a, uh, it's not nearly a 30 kilowatt, um, but he has a 10 kilowatt and he has a thousand gallon tank and it ran for two years. No. <laughs> and again, but it's, you know, it's yeah. for a resident. It's not something of this size. Right. But, you know, with, with LED lighting and efficient uh, appliances, yeah. it goes hey, forever. Run them every week or so. Just well, they have batteries, yeah. so they automatically start when needed. And the only reason they run is to keep the batteries charged. I believe that. I think it gives an engine a little exercise. Mm -hmm. Comments, questions, suggestions on the generator? Okay, we'll go back through the same criteria again. Preservation and reconstruction of the appropriate historic style. Uh, I'll say it probably doesn't apply here. <laughs> Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, non proposed. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities acceptable. Recognition of and respect for view quarters. The back of the building is probably not a view corridor, so I'll call that not applicable. All in favor of the application for the generator, raise your hand. And again, I'll get you to sign above my name there. Thank you. Good luck with your project. And we have minutes. We actually have time to go through them. <laughs> nice. It's really nice. And how about for October the 1st? I'm over for a while. Do I hear what a second? Are, wait, what I'm are sorry. The 20 by 15 banners. These are the proposed standing signs, um, signs. No, these were the light banners, and I think, I don't think maybe it's 20 feet no, by I think feet. no, I think it's two feet. That's a typo. Okay, thank you. I will. <laughs> yep. No. Nope. I think they're up. Nope. Nope. Two nope. feet by one it's, and a half. I think it's two feet by one and a half feet, and I didn't catch the typo. I was going to say on a downtown light pole that 20 by 15 would be pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank pretty, you, Hannah. Pretty visible. <laughs> cut out a lot of the huge shit. <laughs> I'm not sure I missed that one in the proofing, but you can probably prove it, approve it with that change if you're happy with everything else, and then I'll make the change before they're posted. If you want. So other than adjusting the size of the banners, anything else? No. Do I hear a motion to <laughs> approve the October 1st minutes? <laughs> I did. You did. did that. Okay, do I hear a second? I'll second. All in favor of approving it with the change to the banner size. I wasn't there, so, so that's like approved I yep. for, that's for zip. And how about October the 15th? I'll move those two. Everything look good there? Uh, I, you guys don't have enough people for the next two nope. weeks. Eric, Seth, nope. we, need we don't have enough people, so we'll have to table that one. Uh, and the 30th. Yeah, no, we've been to the 30th. Steve, Eric, oh, Seth. Yeah. 
So Sorry. just the 15th, this table. Just the 15th, this table. Yep. The other one's approved. Yeah. Right, yeah. I, this anyway, you can keep Eric's, your copy. Eric's yep. Set. Okay. Yep, you can keep your copy. I, otherwise, my stack's going to get confusing. Okay. So the 30th, we can vote on. How about any any change needed on the thirtieth minutes? So there's a lot for the garage stuff. I've been trying to forget those meetings. <laughs> <laughs> mentioned in the uh, for the solar array that the reason why Greg put that in the first place is because there had been feedback, public feedback requesting some attempt mm -hmm. of looking into if it could be done. Was merely a exploratory. Yep, yeah, not, it was, and that's that's something planned. that's been discussed and sort of dealt with at the DRB level. But I think it makes sense to put that comment in here too. The typo on page two. Second. On the modeling, he's using GIS data and modeling software. Wait, I'm sorry, where are you? That same paragraph. Oh, okay. Where it says they are confident that the buildings are being accurately represented. I mean, he made a statement on more than one occasion that they were using GIS data mm -hmm. and, um, for his modeling software. Yep. I can elaborate on that. Anything to button this all up. It's appreciated. And then you got to deal with Act 250. I don't have to deal with Act 250. Yeah. <laughs> and if there's an appeal, I have to hand over my records. That's most of I, what I would I, have to uh, do. Ran into Fred Bashar and uh, Abishan. So what I get in our I mean, that, he wasn't really complaining. He yeah. just, just, I've known Fred for a long time. Comments for changes needed? I'm not sure if he asking. actually brought that up again. There, though. Well, it seems it seems as though it's a repeat. Basically, it ties in to the previous. Yeah, and it's just. I don't think we. If he didn't actually say that here, there, I don't think we need to put that in because it's supposed to be more of a. A little yeah, bit more of a I running don't. thing. Whereas the this comments that. from here, anything here that's where we have to pull together the reasoning. I'll do in you know, we'll do in the decision. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'd have to see the video. Yeah, it's same here. I'd have to go back to the video again. 
And I don't. I compare these to my notes. I don't have time to go back and yeah. watch the full video. Yeah, I've been here. I've been here. I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> Several people mentioned that balloons have been flown, but they they was there were constant references to the light poles, and they know the height of the light poles and the perspective. Yeah. They can use that perspective and the light poles as a guide to how high the building is going to yeah. be, what it might obstruct or not obstruct. I think most of those views are obstructed by the existing hotel. Mm -hmm. that's six stories tall. I know even if you're standing in the Shaw's lot and you look at the poles, the, the existing hotel is higher than the poles. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's, um, you know, in these same people brought these same arguments to the DRB about the viewshed because they can re-argue that stuff. So we've, we've, we've got uh, a lot on the, in the uh, record about on the stairwells and the heating of stairwells. Mm -hmm. Greg mentioned that the sprinkler system is a dry system. Yep, and I, I'm not, sure. I'm not. I'm not sure he did that in this exact exchange. He's done that in others. He did. He did. And I brought that Besides up. Then, you can't tell the difference when you look at it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she had. I mean, she was intimating that it would need to be heated. Yeah, the sprinkler system. system, and it's a dry system. So well, well, the and this a, is dealt with a the heated utility room. Yeah, and that's which where, is the, where the drive the dry valve is. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the system doesn't need to be heated. Right. And that was hashed out at Outside the DRB level as well, because I had that input from the, the fire chief to be like, dry. we have to have one little closet that has heat in it so we can put the dry valve in there to control everything yeah. else. Mm -hmm. So, so your main shut off. Dry valve uh, controls and everything are in that room, yep. and the rest of it's just empty piping that yep. goes through that the rest of the building. Yeah. So that's where they'll also have the computer software for the parking system in that one closet, like server closet. Anything else that needs to be commented on or changed? Do I hear a motion to approve the October oh, 30th? I've, sorry, I thought minutes. I fixed this. I'm I sorry. No, just this is saying Sue Allen, but that wasn't Sue Allen. This is um, Lucy, Lucy Rose. Anyway, I thought I had fixed this typo. Okay. Um, so that wasn't our assistant manager. I'll fix that. That's the only change yep. we needed. Yep, that's it. I'll move it. So we have a second. second. All in favor? The three mm -hmm. votes to approve. Mm -hmm. And now we're at the November the 5th. He said from the gateway view they ran out of time to do that. Well, when, he, when they came to the, the, the DRB about the signs, uh, uh, you know, they, he just said, Well, it's going to be the wayfinding, and that's not at all what I said. Yeah. Got to make sure that's in there. It's, it's, uh, oh, yeah. No, they've got, they've got they, draft conditions to look at tonight and go over that they should have been looking at for the last several weeks. that elaborates uh, some good because you know some it can't just be a sign it has to be some kind of a, 
a welcoming archi architectural thing in that alleyway from the parking lot mm -hmm. side is hardly welcoming the way they've got it designed. Yeah. People love a beach down there. <laughs> On the teeny tiny bit of waterfront property versus the Confluence Park at the transit center. I like the idea of serving beer on the deck. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Pop up beer garden? Why not? For the deck of the parking garage? Just yeah. on the top floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Close it off for a special well, event. That's, what they, that's what they should fancy, do. For fancy hotels. Fourth of July fireworks. Fourth of July fireworks. Oh, absolutely. Beer garden on the yeah. top floor of the yeah. parking garage. Awesome. <laughs> Palm trees. Stuff like that. Uh, we do have a thought was not completed. Yeah. Like halfway down. I think that's supposed to be clear walkways. Other than signage and then long dash, artwork, landscaping, and clear walkways were like the additional thoughts other than signage. So I'll clean that up. I all the typos this time around, guys. catch everything. This would be the first thing to go on my calendar now for next year. <laughs> so any other changes for the November the 5th? Very looks good. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor, raise your hand. November 5th is approved. So the only thing we have left is the one. October 15th. It's the one from the 15th that yep. then needs to be here for. So if you can, if you can pull out the ones for the 5th, well, you can just pull out everything. I'll just take everything back with me. On your other business, Steve, I'd like to talk a little bit about where we are with the draft. Okay. Got guidelines. I can do it real quickly there. We have a pretty good draft. It still needs some work. And Meredith, you can send send it to people if they want to see it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing that's sort of uh, interesting, you, you know that I find it really silly that the public buildings like City Hall and the schools and all of that are now it's excluded from design review and because they're the most important buildings in town almost. And uh, Meredith has written a good memo asking the city attorney for an opinion of just how how far we can go with reviewing those things. So that's it. No, that would be good. Well, the th and we discussed this with Sarah McShane, too, and the thought is to maybe have a third recommendation form that is for those kinds of projects mm -hmm. that yeah. really focuses what the review needs to be on. Um, just, and then uh, we, don't have to, we don't have to worry about it too much. And then other things can be optional suggestions. All of that can all still go in. Um, at least we get to take a look at it. Yeah. Well, and that's, I haven't, unless it's something that, Literally, I mean, has no, there's no hook at all for design review. If it's a change that they're making and it's in the district, I've been sending it here. Yeah, that's good. Um, doesn't matter what you are. <laughs> <laughs> We're a group of people that get together a couple times a month. Okay, so well, you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to move adjournment. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor of adjournment, raise your hand. Meeting is adjourned.